Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, before this, we already learned about the chapter 8, uh, sorry, chapter heat exchanger, which uh, you already know that there are two uh, ways on how to analyze heat exchanger uh, in heat exchanger chapter. So first is LMTD method, second is NTU method. So now I will focus more on LMTD method first. In this example 10, the condensation of steam in a condenser will be focused more on LMTD method. So I really hope that you will see the difference on how you calculate uh, LMTD method. What is the difference? When there is information given in the question, what kinds of information that must be extracted in order for you to determine whether that question can be solved by LMTD method or NTU method. Okay, please focus on the question given and then the information given in order for you to determine whether it is an LMTD method or NTU method. If both of uh, if all the equations given in the question can make you perform both of the method, then it is okay. If it is not, then you have to take a look at the information and then try to decide whether you want to use LMTD method or NTU method. So let's take a look at the question first. Steam in a condenser of a power plant is to be condensed at a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, okay, with cooling water from nearby lakes, which enters the tubes of the condenser at 14 degrees Celsius and leaves at 20 degrees Celsius. And at this point, we know that the tubes temperature in is 14 degrees Celsius and the temperature for the tubes out is 22 degrees Celsius. So this is information given in the question. For the first uh, information, eh? first information given in the question. Okay, next, the surface area of the tubes is 45 meters square. So we have a tubes and then the surface area of the tubes inside the steam condenser is 45 meters square, which is the surface area, overall surface area. And the overall heat transfer coefficient for this one overall heat transfer coefficient is U, capital letter U. Okay, given with 2100 watt per meter square dot Kelvin. So what does this question want us to do is that means the mass flow rate of the cooling water needed and the rate of condensation of the steam in the condenser. So you have to use, you have to understand, uh, you have to calculate what is the mass flow rate of the cooling water and then uh, what is the rate of condensation, okay? So given the properties, so basically the properties will be given for you, will be given in the question for you. So since this is uh, uh, since it is not been given in the question, you may refer these properties in the table A9 or, uh, or the properties table. Okay, this uh, properties table, if in the question is not given you the properties of, uh, of all of the uh, fluid inside the question, so you may, you will be given with a set of uh, appendix uh, in that appendix will provide you with uh, the property sample so you have to find uh, your uh, info in the property sample so now let's take a look at the figure okay the figure is steam inlet at 30 degrees celsius okay one thing that you have to understand that in the CPPs, you already learned about the CPPs. When there is a phase change, what will happen? So we know that 
in the phase uh, in in the in change of the uh, phase in the property table uh, sorry in the cpp we know that there is a change of heat change of temperature change of pressure and the other one the last one is change of phase so what will happen when there is a temperature change so if there, there is a temperature change you have to maintain the delta p or pressure pressure difference in the system you have to make it constant and then phase also at the same phase for example temperature is 30 degrees celsius and pressure is 1 atm and phase is liquid so if you want to increase the temperature of this fluid up to 40 degrees celsius you have to maintain the pressure and phase so the so temperature will be 40 degrees celsius and then 1 atm and liquid so in this process you have to maintain pressure and phase whereas for the temperature it will increase up to 40 degrees celsius so if you want to change the pressure you have to maintain temperature so temperature 30 degrees celsius and then 1 atm and liquid so you want to change uh, the pressure up to 5 atm what you have to do is you have to maintain the temperature and increase the pressure 5 atm okay and liquid the phase will be constant or maintain liquid phase but the change is only for pressure so you have to change one by one you do not have to change you cannot change uh, temperature and pressure at the same time so the same goes with the phase so what will happen in the condenser in the condenser it will change the phase of the gas or of the steam to the liquid therefore in this uh, in this uh, in this so what we have to do is we have to change the phase of the steam so phase of the steam is in steam or in a gas then we have to change it into liquid so when we have to change the phase of uh, the fluid then we have to maintain pressure and temperature that's why in this figure as you can see we have steam at 30 degrees celsius and outlet of this uh, condenser also with the T D Q S. That is, that is the reason why the steam temperature will be the same. Okay, only the difference here is what the phase. Okay, and that phase will be referred to the CPPs. You already you already learned about the CPPs, chemical process principle, and you already know about it about it. Okay then uh, the second information here the first information in this question is uh, the tube inside uh, the tube temperature in and outlet so we can uh, put it here so the inlet temperature of the water in the tube side will be 14 degrees celsius and outlet of the tubes is 22 degrees celsius so from this information we can actually add knows what kinds of method that we can use okay either it is lmtd method or mq method so if one of the steam or basically uh, normally uh, the outlet temperature maybe here outlet temperature here or uh, outlet temperature here the exit okay is not given in the question so you have you may use NQ method in order for you to determine what is the Q, okay? Q value, rate of heat transfer. Now all the information has been given. You may use you if all the information given, you can use NQ method. And if you want to use much more simpler or much more not complicated method so you may use lmtd method 
LMTT, I think it is a little bit not complicated uh, rather than MTT method. Okay, so you have to use, in this question, I will use LMTD method because all the information in the uh, condenser is already are uh, already been given in terms of the temperature. So we have we we can uh, calculate uh, delta T one and delta T two. So what is delta T one and delta T two? See this figure. So. For you to use LMTD method, these figures and equation is for LMTD method. Eh? So for the LMTD method, you have to use, you have to calculate uh, delta T log mean. So to calculate delta T log mean, you have to calculate delta T1 and delta T2. So from this figure, as I mentioned before in the previous video, you you may choose this side as delta T1 or this side as delta T2. So it is depends on you. If you have uh, already uh, changed the delta T1, it is okay because it will uh, give you the same result, the same uh, values of uh, LMTD method. Delta T log mean. Okay, so from here I will use delta T1 here and delta T2 is here. So you have to remember that delta T1 is Tc in minus Th in. Do not cut minus or subtract Tc in with Tc out. It is totally wrong. Okay, you have to uh, subtract Tc in with Th. In, whereas for the delta T2 is Tc, Th out minus Tc out. So why does Tc in will be, uh, uh, sorry, Th in minus Tc in, okay? And then this is the equation. Okay, to determine what is the rate of heat transfer, you have to substitute into this equation. Okay, this equation, Q dot equal to U is overall heat transfer coefficient. A as its surface area, or much more uh, accurate, is uh, total surface area. Okay, if you have, if you deal with a lot of tubes, then you have to calculate what is the total area of the tubes. So A as is refers to the surface area, or if you have a lot of tubes, then you have to calculate what is the total surface area. And then the last one, this is what we are going to uh, find it after this, delta T log mean. So why do we have to calculate Q dot? So take a look at the equation, uh, to the question. So we have to determine mass flow rate. What does this mass flow rate uh, do with a Q dot? So we know that the Q dot is actually we have so many different types or different forms of Q dot. So one of them is Q dot is U E S delta T log mean. So this is already shown to you <clears throat> in the previous video and the uh, uh, and uh, before this I already uh, show you this equation. And then I already also I also shows you this equation shown to you. In the previous video, m dot cp delta t. So from here, you have to know what is the q dot, so rate of heat transfer. So from this equation, you may or you can calculate what is the mass flow rate. That's why in this question, in order for you to determine what is the mass flow rate, you have to determine what is the rate of heat transfer. So let's take a look, uh, let's uh, go to the calculation. So the first one we have to calculate what is delta T log mean. Solve it, solve for T delta T log mean. We already been given in the question of raw heat transfer and total surface area. So now what we have to do is we have to calculate what is delta T log mean. Okay. We have to find what is delta T1 and delta T2. So now for the condenser, so condenser, we 
we treated it as a counter flow heat exchanger. Okay, for a counter flow heat exchanger, so let's take a look at this figure first. So for the counter flow, this is T in, TH in, this will be TH out. So TC in will be here and TC, TH out will be here. So now these figures previously, okay, these figures is for parallel flow. Then the heat condenser will be treated as a counter flow heat exchanger. Therefore, we have to uh, put it the directions of the flow in the uh, in this way. Okay. So now we have to find what is delta T1 and delta T2. So I have to calculate this is as delta T1 and this is as delta T2. So delta T1 here is TH in minus TC out. So this is out, the flow, flow out for the cold water. Then the delta T1, so here delta T1 is TH in minus TC out. Okay, then for delta T2, okay, now we take a look at delta T2 here. So this is TC in. And this is TH out. Okay, so we have to minus TH out minus TC in. Okay, TC out, I'm sorry, TH out minus TC out. Okay, that is the two equation for the delta T. So substitute the values. Okay, delta T1 first. So we have the T minus 22. Okay, this is degree Celsius. So we will have 8 degrees Celsius. Okay, then delta T2 is the T minus 40 degrees Celsius. So you will have 16 degrees Celsius. So now we have delta T1 and delta T2. So to find what is delta T log mean from this equation, delta T log mean is delta T1 minus delta T2 over long delta T1 over delta T2. So substitute into the delta T log mean equation, okay? So delta T log mean equation is delta T1, okay, minus delta T2. Divide by ln delta t one minus by, uh, divide by delta t two. So substitute all the values that you get before this here delta t one and delta t two. Substitute into this equation. Okay. So delta t one is eight minus sixteen divide by ln. Okay. Delta T1 is 8 divided by 16. So 8 minus 16 divided by ln 8 divided by 16. So you will get your delta T log mean is 11.5 degrees Celsius. This is your delta T log mean. And after you get, you got the values for delta T log mean, what you have to do is you have to calculate what is the rate of heat transfer for the condenser. So now, that means what is the rate of the condenser? So you will use this equation, okay? U A S delta T log mean. So in this uh, equation, all the information is already been given for the overall heat transfer coefficient, total surface area. Delta T log mean is already been calculated by you here. We will we already get eleven point five. So substitute into this equation to determine what is the Q dot. So your uh, U is 2100 and then AS is 45 and last is 11.5. So you must remember all these values is in, all these values are in uh, SI units. So if you have a centimeter value, 
So you have a centimeter unit, you have to change it into uh, SI unit, which is uh, in meter. So if you have kilogram, then it will, uh, if you have gram, then you have to change to the gram. Or if you have any other uh, values that is not in uh, SI units, so you have to change into SI unit, okay? And please be remember that when you substitute the values, you have to take a look at the kilo, okay? Either it is only a joule per second or it's kilojoule per second. So that kilo have to change to 10, time 10 to times 10 to the power of 7, okay? If you are not uh, change that magnitude or units, you, have, you will get the wrong uh, values for your uh, equation, uh, for your question, okay? Uh, solution, okay? Then the Q dot here is 1087. So this is in uh, kilowatt, okay? So you should get 1087 times 10 to the power of 3. Okay, the power of three. Now, uh, from this question, it shows that we have to determine what is the mass flowing of the cooling water. Then, from uh, I've already mentioned before that we will use these two equation. One is Q dot U A S delta T log. I mean, it's already been calculated by you, and you already get what is the Q dot. And now. It is our job to find what is the mass flow rate, okay? That's why in these properties, we already find what is the CP, uh, specific heat capacity for steam, okay? Water, cold water. I'm oh, sorry, not steam, but cold, cold water. And then CP delta T. So we have to substitute into this equation, okay? Now, uh, from these uh, values, so we will use Q dot M dot cold water CP delta T cold water. Okay, so here is the temperature gradient for cold water. Therefore, we are only uh, substitute the value of delta T for the cold water only. So we have to take a look at the C out and the, uh, C in. Okay, now we have uh, 10,000, uh, we have to rearrange this equation because we want to find what is the mass flow rate of cold water. So from this equation, when you rearrange, you will get delta T, uh, M dot, nah, okay, M dot C. So Q dot over CP delta T, C, uh, cold water. So we know that the heat is constant, the rate of heat transfer or uh, heat transfer is constant. Therefore, the Q dot here will be the same as this Q dot. Lah. Okay, so substitute these values. So you will get the values for your uh, M dot. Okay, 10,087 times 10 to the power of 3 watt. And then divide by CP is 4.184. Uh, so now this is 4.184 kilojoule. So you have to change into what? Uh, joule, okay? Joule per kilogram dot Kelvin. Then times with your delta TCW is TC, uh, TC out, okay, TC out minus TC in. So from here, TC out is 22 minus 14, so degree Celsius. So this is in Kelvin, this is in degree Celsius. You do not have to worry because this is temperature gradient. If you have a range of this temperature, then the uh, the conversion will be 1 Kelvin per 1 degree Celsius. So it will be the same. If you have a single value or a specific temperature, a specific point, a specific uh, one position, then you cannot use this kinds of uh, 
this kinds of uh, uh, temperature conversion. So you have to use uh, plus 273.15 Kelvin in order for you to determine what is the value of that degree Celsius in Kelvin. Since you, we are dealing with the temperature range, therefore uh, we can use the uh, temperature conversion for the range. Okay. So to change the temperature, for uh, we will use one Kelvin per one degree Celsius. Okay, one Kelvin is equal to one degree Celsius. So from here, we will get the value for the MC is thirty two point five kilogram per second. So we already solved the first uh, objective or the aims for the question to find what is the mass flow rate of cooling water, m dot c. Now, take a look at the second question. Okay, rate of condensation of the steam. So, when it talks about or it asks you to find what is the rate of condensation, it means that you have to calculate what is the mass flow rate for the steam. So, we know that the steam has been uh, need to be condensed or has been condensed from the vapor to the liquid. Then we have to know what uh, what is the rate of that steam uh, turns from steam to the uh, liquid. It means that what is the mass flow rate of the steam converted into water. So in order for you to determine what is the rate of condensation here, the rate of condensation means that mass flow rate, eh? kilogram per second so we know that there is another question another equation that can be used in order for you to determine what is the rate of condensation so from this equation q dot is equal to m dot hfg this equation is specifically for the contents steam okay because there is hfg okay heat of vaporization okay so if you are using this equation to determine what is the mass flow rate it is actually you calculate what is the mass flow rate of the steam you are not calculating mass flow rate for cold water okay you have to give um, you have to uh, differentiate between these two equations eh? so this First equation here, m dot cp delta t, will be used for the cold water liquid in order for you to determine what is the mass flow rate of the cold water. If you have or if you want to know what is the rate of condensation or mass flow rate of the steam, you have to use this equation. Since in this equation we have the heat of vaporization. So the same with the previous. Uh, uh, previous example, uh, previous uh, question, we will use the same Q dot, okay? So now we will use Q dot equal to M dot HFG. So this M dot is for steam, okay? Now rearrange this equation, M dot steam equal to Q dot divided by HFG. So now our Q dot is 10,097 times 10 to the power of 3 watt divided by 2431. So take a look here. The value of 2431 is in kilojoule. So if your equation because with only joule, then you have to change this into joule. So 2431 times 10 to the power of 3 joule okay, per kilogram. Then you will get your value of m dot is 0 0.5 kilogram per second. Okay, you already solved for the second question. So now for here, we know that 10, 1087 times 10 to the power of, of 3 is what? If you want to use a kilo, it's okay. But if you use this kilo, then 
two four three one should be in kilojoule. Okay, but I don't want you to uh, to to do that kinds of steps because if you have something, if you uh, refers to this uh, um, method of steps in the uh, heat transfer, all of it use joule as uh, your units. Okay, as the units, then if you change a lot of uh, things or if you use a lot of types of uh, uh, units in, in, in order for you to solve. If you are okay with that, then it should be no problem. If, uh, if you make a mistake just for this unit, then it is uh, not good for you because you lost a lot of marks because of that unit. You know how to do, but you frequently change the way how you manipulate the units in your equation, then that will make you, uh, maybe in the future, or sometimes you may uh, confuse about the unit, then it will turn into uh, something else, which will uh, affect to your uh, marks. And my suggestion and my advice is to use what or joule instead of uh, kilowatt. So you have to change all the units into the SI unit without this uh, kilojoule. If that is a kilowatt or kilojoule, you have to change it to times 10 to the power of 3. So you have to change the unit before you substitute into the equation. Okay? Okay, that's all for this example 10. Thank you.